Every day, I wake up as someone else. Today, I woke up as some guy in his late 20s. Small apartment, has a cat, somewhat chubby. Looking around my apartment for the day, I notice he's a fanatic gamer. Tons of game memorabilia, gaming PC, uses a TV as a monitor. I woke up on the couch, PC still on, TV is off. Make myself a cup of coffee. Sit down and turned on the monitor. Looked up his YouTube to see what this guy likes. Gaming videos and his subscriber feed. I'm not sure what I expected. The cat was meowing and purring at me to which I replied. Hello there little fluffball, would you like some milk? Got up, made him a small bowl of cat milk, made myself a bowl of cornflakes, and sat down and watched a YouTube video while eating my cornflakes. Mentally preparing myself for what's to come, as this is known as the silence before the storm. You see, yesterday, I woke up as a 15-year-old girl. The day before that, a 70-year-old man. And the day before that, as an 8-year-old boy. When I woke up as an 8-year-old boy, I woke up in a bright blue room with happy clouds and a happy sun on the wall. Typical young boy stuff around me. My mom woke me up to go to school. She made me a sandwich and packed my bags and lunch. She was a very kind woman. I went off to school and had a normal day at school. When I walked home, I felt a blunt pain on top of my head. I went black and woke up an hour later in some shed in the woods tied to a bed. An older man was violating me. I kicked and begged and screamed for him to let me go knowing he wasn't going to, until eventually he was done. He laid next to me for a few minutes while looking at me and said, Don't take this personal, boy. It's not your fault. You just so happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. He got off the bed, opened up the nightstand, and grabbed the biggest knife I had ever seen. I screamed at the top of my lungs, begging for my life, screaming for him to let me go. Tears were pouring out of my eyes, but again, knowing it was not going to change anything. The man sat on top of me, set the knife to my neck, and in a fluid motion, slit my throat. I gurgled blood and my vision went black. When I was a 70-year-old man, I woke up, walked downstairs, and saw the front door open. I went outside and noticed my loving wife outside with two cups of coffee waiting for me. I gave her a kiss and sat down next to her. She laid her head on my shoulder and we talked a bit. We were really enjoying our retirement. Our son came to visit us that day with his wife and kids. A boy named Jesse, aged 12, and a girl, Chloe, 8. It was a bright sunny day with few clouds and a gentle ocean breeze. They came to surprise me and my wife with a nice day out to a Disney island. Hey, just because I'm older doesn't mean I don't love this kind of thing. We got in the minivan and set off. About half an hour into the drive, we were on the highway. The kids were in the back playing I Spy with my little eye. My wife and I and my son and his wife are discussing what color they would paint the living room. It was going to be a soothing yellow color. A motorcycle from the left overtook us while in front of us a car was trying to switch lanes. The motorcycle faced a head-on collision with the back of the car, sending the guy flying on the motorcycle into our lane. My son swiftly turned the wheel to the right, leaving us in a collision trajectory with a tree. It was the loudest bang I had ever heard in my life, and everything went black. When I came to, I was in the hospital. My brother and his wife were next to me with red, puffy eyes. You could tell they'd been crying for a long time and still were despite me waking up. I looked at them and asked them what happened. My brother looked up to me and between his tears, he explained to me that when we hit the tree, both my son, his wife, my wife and our grandson were instantly dead from the impact. The daughter was still alive and was in the intensive care unit she had a major brain injury, a broken spine, and the chances of survival were almost nothing. 
If she were to survive, she'd be in a wheelchair her entire life. The motorcycle guy had a few broken bones, but other than that, he was perfectly fine. The guy who changed lanes was arrested. The entire world stopped for me, then and there. The hospital room started spinning. I was dizzy, confused, scared, angry, and felt lonely. I started crying. My entire family was destroyed because of this. There were so many things I wanted to call the guy, but it would never be satisfactory. I cried until I had no tears left. It felt like I was dehydrated, that's how much I cried. My life was over. I had nothing left to live for. My brother sat next to me the entire night. Eventually, I cried myself to sleep. When I woke up as a 15-year-old girl, I felt depressed. Not the kind of sad or angry feelings you would normally experience as a teenager. I actually mean depressed. Suicidal thoughts. No energy. Life is meaningless. It took all my energy to get out of bed. The room looked like your average 15-year-old girl's room. Makeup in a mirror, posters of a boy band, clothes on the floor. Nothing out of the ordinary. I went to the living room where my mom had made me breakfast. Bacon and eggs, and a glass of chocolate milk, my favorite. Even though I know it's my favorite, it just feels like my mom does it because she feels bad for me or sees me as a liability. I hate this feeling. If I wasn't here, my mom's life would be so much easier. Good morning, sweetie. My mom practically cheered at me. What was she so happy about? She must be trying just a tad too hard to make it seem like I didn't ruin her life and took away her freedom to do whatever she wants. Good morning, mom. I forced out, trying to sound happy. My mom knows I'm depressed. I've been seeing a weekly psychologist and taking antidepressants. I went to school where I get picked on. I always walked alone, sat alone, and just didn't bother to socialize with all these stupid teenagers. I was walking down the hallway when a girl behind me grabbed my hands and put a zip tie around my wrists. After she did that, she kicked me in the back of my knees, the force of which made me to kneel down. In just a flash, I felt a wet sensation on top of my head. She had thrown a bucket of water that smelled disgusting over me. I was cold, in pain, and wet, crying while the tears seemed non-existent through the water on my head and the hair over my eyes. Within the hour, the principal had called upon all students to confess who did it. Surprisingly, no one admitted it, even though everyone knew who did it. People don't snitch, not if it was targeted against me. I was picked up by my mom who brought me a change of clothes before the car ride home. She looked extremely pissed off. Being depressed means that it feels like she was pissed off at me. I was a liability to everyone, a burden to the people that love me. I was just a waste of space. When we got back home, my mom gave me a firm hug and said, go and have a bath. We're going to have pizza tonight. Watch a movie that you pick out and just have a cozy night, just for you. She grabbed me and hugged me again. I love you, sweet cheeks. You know that, right? I know, I pushed out. I went upstairs and had the bath running, got undressed and sat in the bath. On the edge of the bath, I had put this tiny piece of metal, this tiny piece of metal that would solve all my problems. I grabbed the razor blade and cut my left wrist, then the right wrist. When I was done, I looked at what I had done, and it filled me with the biggest sense of regret I had ever had. I screamed, Mom, help! My mom stormed to the bathroom, which was locked. She kicked in the door and saw me there, in a pool of crimson water, each second passing, becoming more and more pale. She called 911 on her cell phone next to me, all while my vision started to get blurry. I whispered with all my strength, I'm sorry, Mom. It's not your fault. That leaves me with today. Waking up is this guy. Every day, I wake up on someone's worst day of their lives. 
It doesn't have to be that person dying. It can be something that changes their life forever. Within half an hour of waking up as that person, I get their memories. It actually feels like I already have their memories, but they're still mixed up with the person from yesterday. In that half hour, the memories get separated. About four hours after waking up, I get a text message from my best friend Alex. Hey bud, wanna go outside and take over some gyms? He means taking over gyms in Pokemon Go. Hell yeah, I replied back. Meet you in 15 minutes in front of the tobacco store. We meet up, have a smoke, and start walking around taking over gyms. We talk about silly stuff and joke around, check out some girls, and just generally have fun. We looked on the Poke Radar and see an incredibly rare Pokemon named Blastoise nearby. We freak out and start walking as fast as we can to the Pokemon. Normally, we always obey traffic rules, but the adrenaline shot and excitement we had left us kind of incapable of clear thinking. We run over a street. I hear a woman screaming, watch out! I look to my right and I'm looking straight into a bus with a bus driver looking clearly as freaked out as us. I hear a loud smack and feel an immense pain in the right side of my body before rolling down the street. My best friend tried to pull me back as he saw the bus coming, but his grip slipped on my jacket. The ambulance was there to help me within three minutes. I was put in it and drove off with blaring sirens. I started violently shaking while I started coughing up blood. I knew in the back of my mind I wasn't going to make this, and all for that stupid Pokemon. The ambulance personnel tried their best to keep me breathing, but every breath I took felt forced. They incubated me and drained the blood from my lungs, but to no avail. The ambulance started to look weird, and the colors were changing. I felt life slipping from my body, and I decided I just needed a nap. Just a nap, and everything would be okay. I drifted off. The next morning, I woke up as a woman. The woman is about 50 years old. I turn off the alarm clock, get out of bed and get dressed. Get my hair done, go to the kitchen and start making breakfast for me and my daughter. I'm making her eggs and bacon with a glass of chocolate milk. Her favorite. 